Hey everyone and welcome to my guide to artifact weapons in Legion. So today we're going to do a quick overview, then we're going to go into depth about how the artifact weapons operate and how you can best play this system to your advantage, including farming up some artifact power nice and quickly. It's a big system that you'll put a lot of time into, so it's worth being well informed before you make any big decisions with it. Each spec will have its own artifact weapon in Legion, but you get the first at the start of the expansion, and then you're able to unlock the remaining ones at level 102. Some healers and tanks might be in a bit of a conundrum about this, because you might want to level up in a DPS spec, but focus your progression on the tanking or healing spec. Well, first, many tanks and healers can actually be effective while leveling, but if you want to level up, in a different spec to what you want to play in endgame, then just select your leveling specs artifact weapon initially, and then do the quest to get your other one at level 102, and the actual progression won't really be a worry. Every artifact weapon is separate and has its own progression. They then have a series of traits, so when you level up the power of your artifact weapon, then you're going to be able to unlock a trait. You level up your artifact weapon using artifact power. This comes in the form of consumable items that you apply um, to your currently equipped item. So basically, you right click in the artifact power item and it will give X amount of artifact power to your currently equipped artifact weapon. The cost of each trait will increase at a slow pace until you hit the 13th one. After that, the cost really begins to increase exponentially. This is counteracted by a system called artifact knowledge. These are work orders that you place in your class order hall. Each time you complete an artifact knowledge work order and use the item that it produces, you will get an increased multiplier on the amount of artifact power that you earn. This will actually increase to a really massive amount, with higher levels of artifact knowledge being thousands of percent. This multiplier is permanent and it will apply to your entire character, however it is not account wide. It also does not apply retroactively to artifact power items that you currently own. So this means that whenever you like have an artifact power item drop, you're pretty much just good to use it then, there's no real point in holding on to them. So what's the upshot of all this? So you're going to progress at a slow enough pace on your mains artifact weapon. However, you will be able to catch up on your alt specs really quickly. And let's just look at an example. My beta hunter has 13 traits. The next artifact trait would cost me 24,000 power, and I have an artifact knowledge multiplier of 1,775. So an artifact power world quest would give me about 3,200 power. Now, if I decided that I wanted to play Beast Mastery instead, and I wanted to start its artifact weapon from scratch, well, the amount of power that I would earn from a single world quest will give me multiple traits with this new Beast Mastery weapon. So as you can see, maintaining your off spec is pretty damn easy. You will be able to respec your artifact weapon at the cost of artifact power, but I really don't recommend that you do that because it's just wasted time. You are able to complete the entire talent tree, so the only thing that actually varies is the order in which you unlock the various different traits. Now, not all traits are made equally, so you will want to plan them out first. So, first of all, what you want to do is look at the golden traits, or the ones like with the sort of gilding around them. These are more powerful, so work out which one is the best pick, and then work on unlocking them first. If you are, for an example, a raider, then you probably want to get as much damaging traits as you can without having to sink loads of artifact power into the defensive traits, because they won't help your throughput that much. This will vary spec by spec, so probably just look up Icy Veins for your spec and you'll find a decent enough pointer there. And then finally, once you've completed all of your traits for an artifact weapon, there is a kind of repeatable trait that you can just dump artifact power into. It will give you a small increase in the power of your weapon, but to be honest, once you get to that stage, you're probably worth getting your alt spec artifact weapons up to par. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the end game. Think of it as being a little bit similar to the Paragon leveling from Diablo, where it's just an endless system of you getting a reward and power. Still on the topic of artifact power, let's talk about how you can effectively farm it. First, you always want to have artifact knowledge research orders going. Always. These are essential to progression. I would almost recommend leveling up your alts early so that you can bring artifact knowledge work orders, or so you can get those uh, work orders going on them as soon as possible. So the first thing that I recommend doing is just looking at your world map and doing all of the world quests that will give you artifact power. You'll also want to make sure that the map is cleared of treasures, as many of the treasures will indeed give you artifact power. So a quick run through the world using handy notes, Legion, will do this for you. It'll mark all the locations of the treasures on the map. 
After that, you will want to grind out heroic dungeons. Mythics are great and you'll be doing them for gearing reasons anyway, but they are in a weekly lockout, so they're a bit less farmable. Each heroic boss has a chance to drop an artifact power item, as does the trash, and then your first random heroic of the day will guarantee an artifact power item. Suramar is also a massive source of artifact power. Its one-off quest rewards give you a really big initial boost. And then if you've somehow skipped out the leveling content, be sure to clear it anyway, because there is a good amount of artifact knowledge in the questing. Now, there is a bit of potential confusion that I need to clear up here. For the longest time, it was the case that one-off rewards did not benefit from the artifact knowledge system. So that's just stuff like narrative quests. Blizzard changed this at the tail end of August, so artifact knowledge actually does apply to all of your quest rewards and all of the one-off sources that exist in the game. The thinking is that without artifact knowledge, they were just quickly irrelevant and not very exciting, but with artifact knowledge, they're not really overpowered because their reward will always be proportionately reasonable in comparison to the cost of your next artifact trait, like on your main weapon. So the worry here is that people will just hold back in doing content until their artifact knowledge would get really high, but overall that's just not effective and you're kind of playing yourself if you're doing that. Also, players who want to have multiple effective specs might be concerned that, you know, making their alt spec weapon viable will gimp progress on your, uh, on your main weapon. That really isn't the case, and this was excellently shown by Mr. Robot, who created a handy infographic to show how leveling up your off-spec artifact weapon doesn't really slow you down that much at all. This happens because of how artifact traits start off super cheap, but uh, get super expensive, so keeping your off-spec artifact weapon to 80% of the power of your main one isn't really going to hold you back that much at all. And then we also have relics. So relics replace weapon drops with Legion content. They will increase the item level of your artifact weapon by a fixed amount, and will also give you a bonus rank to one of your traits. Each weapon has two relic slots at the start, and then the third one will unlock by completing your class order hall campaign. Relics have a type that corresponds to a slot on your weapon, for an example, frost, fire, unholy, air, stuff like that. Relics have an item level, and the higher the item level of the relic, the more it will increase the item level of your artifact weapon overall. Relics come from a variety of sources, including all dungeon difficulties, all raid difficulties, world quests, level up quests, and then crafting. Just like with regular gear, relics can Titanforge to a higher item level, similar to how, say, the mythic dungeon gear works in Warlords of Draenor. And that really is it for the artifact weapons, just a once-over pass of how to get your artifact power, what's up with artifact knowledge, and, uh, you know, what's up with relics. Overall, it's a pretty si simple system, but it's definitely one that's worth understanding for Legion. Now, there are one or two, like, cosmetic things that I didn't cover. As an example, if you click on your Artifact Forge in your Class Order Hall, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different achievements that you can complete to unlock, you know, new skins for your Artifact Weapon. That's just the kind of stuff you can explore on your own. Now, for each individual class, there are generally hidden Artifact Skins. I might do videos on them in the future. You'll be able to find the information online if you're interested, though. But that pretty much is everything for the Artifact Weapons. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.